Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, let us see how to use cache in a Spring Boot or an API project. There are different cache mechanisms available in the market for you to make use of. For example, ES Cache, Redis, Hazelcast, Couchbase, Gemfire, etc. In this example, we will look into cache in two parts. In the first part, we will look at the auto configuration inbuilt cache functionality of Spring. And in the next part, you will see how to use cache manager to configure multiple caches and how to set expiry for them. And for this, I'll be using EHCache using Java configurations. Before we jump into hands-on, let us discuss a common topic that many developers are confused about. And this is a hot topic in an interview too. What is the difference between a cache and a cookie? Well, it's straightforward and simple. Let me give you an example. So a cookie is used to store a user detail, whereas a cache is used to store information to render the page faster. Cookies often track information like how frequently the user visits, what is the time of the visit, what is the button that was clicked by the user, what is the product that was clicked by the user, what, is the, what are the items in a shopping cart, etc. For example, uh, in case of YouTube or Facebook, right? They show hacks based on the information available in your browser cookies. Let us say you visit Amazon.com and you are looking into some shoes, okay? And after some time, you open up a Facebook page and you would immediately notice that Facebook would show ads related to shoes in their page. How is it that done? Well, it's where cookies comes of use. So this is a major uh, example for a cookie. Whereas in case of a cache, right? Uh, when you open websites with large pictures or let's say uh, videos or audios or a page with huge data, right? Uh, some historical data is there in a page and you're rendering that page to the end user. This may take some time to render in front of the user. Here's where you can use a cache to store the site contents like the images, videos, audios or these huge data, etc. on the user computer. So that the next time when you load the same website, right? Uh, you'll find it loading much faster. So both cookie and cache can have an expiry limit, but it depends upon your business needs. All right, that's enough of theoretical explanations. Let's dive right into hands-on. All right, so I have a Spring Boot project and you could see here uh, uh, we have few dependencies. One is a web starter and then I have a cache dependency uh, you could add it from um, by creating a new spring boot startup project or you can go to the uh, initializer website and you know download a project and import to your local workspace okay so the only thing that i'm going to use is the web uh, starter and the cache starter and then in order to make it auto configure and work uh, in a simple way right there's one thing that you need to do that is you need to add this other rate of enable caching annotation and then let's go to our controllers okay so a controller a pretty much a simple straightforward controller uh, it's, it's going to be a rest controller uh, it's going to have be, have a uri slash student and i'm going to accept a param which is going to be a student id and it's going to call a service and that service is going to return a student object and that's that's pretty much in the controller now let's go to the service all right uh, so here i'm here at the service okay so my service, uh, here's where I'm going to implement the cache. So in order to implement the cache, right, let me first do a thread dot slip. That is, I'm going to delay, just like an, on a regular scenario where you'll be hitting a, a third party service or a database and get some data and you know send it back to the user, right? So we are going to simulate something like that. So the only thing is I'm going to uh, make it sleep for four seconds, okay? So then uh, let me, create few student objects okay so i've created few student objects okay and they are pretty much nothing but uh, you know the id name first name last name age address and what is their major okay so that's that's what we are going to do now so now what we are going to do here is like here's where we are going to implement a cache 
and for that right uh, depending upon the student id that is passed in the get mapping we are going to send that particular record okay so let's do this let's do a stream dot uh, filter get find first okay so we are just going to match the student id uh, with this particular student list of student objects you're going to find it first and then return it okay so let's return this and this would actually return a student object depending upon the student id that was passed in as a input so now uh, let's go and implement the cache okay so in order to implement a cache right uh, you can annotate the method with a date of cache uh, there are different annotations available for you to make use at rate of cacheable, at rate of cache evict, cache put, uh, and then auto configure cache. Auto configure cache is something that you don't have to worry about the underlying you know, implementations. Everything is auto configured for you by the Spring Boot uh, application, and you don't worry about different properties, parameters, uh, conditions, uh, things like that, keys, and etc. and etc. So for this example, right, we are not going to use auto configure cache because that would make it way more simpler. Uh, we are going to make use of a few things like cacheable, uh, cache evict because it would set up a base for our next part. Okay, and cacheable is where you would actually set your cache. Cache evict is where you would remove it from the cache. Cache put is where you would go ahead and update your cache. For this example, let's, let me keep it simple because we are going to discuss a lot more detail in my part two video when we use the EH cache and cache manager with multi cache along with expiry, all those things. Okay. So let me give you a value. So the available parameters, there are a bunch of parameters available here. We will be definitely looking into like at least four or five parameters in this in our next uh, you know, part two example. So for this past part one, I'm just going to keep it very simple. Okay. So I'm going to give a value. So this is going to be stored in the student cache. Okay, and let me give a key. Key is very important, especially when you work with cache. So remember to always give a key. Okay, so let me say in this case, it's going to be student cache. Plus, and it's going to use the spell expression language so in this case i'm going to cache the key is going to be student cache of this student id so the entire data return for this student id is going to be stored in this particular key okay this particular var variable should match the method signature variable okay so make sure that this matches and in case let's say you were using a request object let's say you're using a request object like this okay so there's an object like this right in this case if you want to cache it right what you would be doing is like we doing student dot uh, let's say first name and then you can do a, a plus and then keep keep on adding okay so in our case it's going to be just a simple string parameter so that's pretty much we have implemented our cache in our Spring Boot application. Let's go and test it out. We start the server. It's going to run in port 9001. Okay. All right, the server is up and running in port 9001. So let's go to our browser and let's try to you know, see how this caching works. All right, guys, I'm here at the browser level. Let me clear up my uh, network tab and it's go I'm going to access the student URI. I'm going to give the student ID here and let's try to hit and run it. And you could see here the time would be displayed here. Let us wait for it. So it took approximately 4.47 seconds. Now let's again hit it and the response came back in 24 milliseconds. Do you see the difference? This particular data is returned from the cache. 
So we have accessed the URM multiple times and you could see here the first it took 4.47 seconds whereas the rest of all took just milliseconds. So now let's go back to our example, okay? I just want to show you a few things before we move on to the part two video. All right, so we had a cache value, we had a key. There are a few other things that you need to know, okay? So one is condition, okay? So condition is something you want to configure for your cache. Let us say, hey, I want my data to be cached only when this particular parameter, uh, you know, is true. That's that's one example for condition. And let us say, uh, if the result is not equal to null, then cache it. So that condition can be obtained using unless. Okay. Uh, look. Okay. So you can use this unless to determine when you want the data to be stored in the cache. So these are different parameters. We'll definitely look in detail on these things when we work with the ES cache manager. Uh, for the part one, right, this is pretty much straightforward. So in case of uh, cache evict, you would do pretty much the same syntax. I want to evict from cache. Okay, so I want to evict it from the cache. But did you notice an anomaly here? We have no condition to determine when to remove the data from the cache and when to add it. So in this case, you can do one thing. You can use this before invocation, which means before the method is invocated, you would remove it from the cache. And again, when the method invocation is done, the data will be cached. This does not provide a good solution. You could see here there is no condition and every time the method is invoked, you remove it from the cache and after getting the results, you are putting it in the cache. So again, when you hit the URI, it's going to remove it from the cache and again put it in the cache. There is no uh, advantage of using this. So it is a must and necessary that you use a conditional caching, which will help you to understand when to cache and when to evict and when to update your cache. All right, so that's pretty much about the basics of caching. Uh, in my next video, we will be looking into more detail about ES Cache Manager configurations using Java configurations and how to create multiple caches in your applications with expiries. Thanks for watching, guys, and please subscribe for more such videos. Thank you.